Hello everyone, my name is Jens Brunton and welcome back to Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. I'm joined once again by Tyler. Hello. We are now in the third AB game round, which is the first mm -hmm. time we've ever seen a round three. We are against Temyoji and Quark and having to decide whether to ally or betray them. They say they're going to ally, but they could potentially leave us and there's a whole bunch of problems that we discussed in the last round. So, even so, I'm going to pick... I'm going to go ahead and pick ally. I'm going to try and trust them for now and see where that goes. It could screw us over, uh, but I think Dio's probably Round gonna do that first. Of the Ambidex game has been completed. Can we skip this Results part? Oh yeah, we can. Will be we can skip all the two dialogue lines. <laughs> Results from round three will now be displayed. A lot less conversation with your partner when there's no partner. Yeah. It's a fair number Seven of eyes. Faces. Yeah, it's like as many as yep. possible. Lots of betrayal. Mm -hmm. Lots of betrayal. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, so let's look at this. So obviously Alice Phi Dio didn't go anywhere because Alice is dead, so it's Phi versus Dio. Uh, Dio's always going to betray because that's what he does. Yeah, and Phi, and Phi knows protecting. that. Then Luna and Clover betrayed... K. Yeah. Luna wouldn't have decided that, so Clover's the one who decided that. Yeah. She might have wanted to protect Luna, but it's hard to say, really. Yeah. Clover is always, like, a wild card, I think. Mm-hmm. K obviously wouldn't want to kill Luna, so he allied. So that screwed him over, though. Or, I guess, unscrewed over Clover. Yeah. And then Temioji and Quark. Well, now I'm going to feel better about going down the betray route with them then. <laughs> Although that's going to suck, because then it's just going to be a board of betrayal at the end, except for K. Yeah, it is. K is special. Or subtracted yeah. accordingly. It is odd, though, that Temioji and Quark wouldn't trust you this time. Yeah. And now they put us down on one again, so we're with Phi. Yeah. Now we could die next round. Yeah. Please check your We're dumb against Dio or something. Updated Assuming there is a next points. round. The nice thing is that for Temi for Temioji, Quark, and Clover, they all now have enough room that if they stuck around, they could actually be betrayed and still have enough to get out. Yeah. What happens if we ever reach like the hundreds digit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just get an overflow error. Hey! What the hell, guys? Why'd you betray me? Quark had nothing to do with this. I made the vote. Grandpa. All right, fine. Why'd you break your promise, Temioji? I only promised you one thing. We wouldn't open the number nine door, even if we got nine points. You said you would ally, but you never uh, Yeah. I, oh my god. Do we need to start getting things in writing? <laughs> what? So you're not going to leave? Not what I said. Of course we're going to leave. What? Look, see Clover over there? What? Oh yeah, see this is what I said about Quark, but actually it's mm -hmm. he's just counting on them. Don't tell me! You jerk. Oh no. She's... That bitch! Wait. Quark and Tenmyoji have... The words were barely out of her mouth when Temioji and Quark ran past. Why do you care about them, oh, particularly, it. over Clover? Yeah, I don't know. It seems like we're equally screwed, no matter how many people can get out. Mm -hmm. Clover? Are you really going to leave? Well, yeah. This is your fault, Luna. You should have stopped her. Why else would I open the door? But why? I'm going to go call the others, so we can capture Zero Senior. Tenmyoji, are you and Quark going too? Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, everybody. So Sigma, happy? I kept my promise. Clover opened the door, not me. Like hell I'm happy. That's some shady shit, Tenmyoji. You say so. I have to get out of here, and that's that. He's gotta pay for what he's done. He? Zero. 
You mean you know who Zero Senior is? Yeah. No point keeping it a secret now, I suppose. I know exactly who Zero Senior is. What? I'm still gonna tell you, not gonna tell you who. Mm hmm. The only secret is. I'm, I'm keeping Zero a secret, but not the fact that I know who he is. Yeah. The number nine door. It will. Let's go! Come on, guys! Time to move! Right. Oh, wait! This is for you, Mr. Sigma! Oh? Quark held something out. I looked down to see two pieces of folded paper. What is this? It's a letter. I wrote it in the director's office before the AB game. I wanted to tell you what kind of guy Grandpa is. So, read it, okay? He pressed it into my hand. See you later, Mr. Sigma. Then he turned and ran toward the door, Temyoji and Clover following in his footsteps. I feel like it's grabbed. very likely you will not see him later. Yeah. We should just grab Quark and then, you know, tell Temyoji, no, 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 you're stuck here now. I was so surprised by the letter that I didn't even try to stop them. Before I could think of anything to say. See you. Goodbye. Gosh dang it. We were used. But yeah. that'll make us feel better for the other route, so. I didn't even gain anything for betraying you. I know, he still would have been Shit. able to get out. They're gone. All we can do now is hope they bring help back. No, because I think Dale's going to blow us all up. Indeed. I agree. In fact, Dio should activate the bomb, go run to a bomb and activate it now to catch them in the blast before they go, if yeah. that was his mission. Maybe then we'd know where the Zero Bomb is. Yeah. Yeah, please, Dio, run to the Zero Bomb. I looked down at Quark's letter and slowly unfolded it. Unfolded it. His handwriting was still slightly uneven, but he'd filled both pages with writing. I began to read. So you want to use Quark's voice for this, or your normal voice? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's Sigma reading it, so. It is Sigma reading it. <clears throat> yeah. So this is what Quark said. <laughs> he said, It was a really stormy day when he found me. He said the rain was coming down so hard it almost hurt. But somehow he managed to hear a baby crying. I guess I must have been crying pretty loud. He took me home and did his best to raise me. But he'd never been married or had a kid before, so I think it was really hard for him. He couldn't figure out how to mix the formula, so he was always carrying the directions around with him. Also, I guess I was pretty a, picky, a pretty picky eater. So if he didn't get the water to formula ratio just right, I wouldn't eat it. I guess I was kind of a pain, huh? But he didn't give up, and now here I am. When he found me, I was really, really small and he was worried that I might not make it. That's why he named me Quark. A Quark is a really, really small thing, and I was really, really small too. Grandpa didn't need to worry though, because it turned out that I was pretty tough. When I was one, he forgot I was sleeping in the bed of his truck and drove off. I rolled out and went off the back, but I didn't even get scratched. I started walking when I was two, and when he wasn't looking, I fell down the stairs. I didn't get hurt then, either. When I was three, I got really sick. I had a super high fever for a week. But eventually, I got better. I guess you could say I'm pretty lucky. Anyway, I didn't really have any more accidents after that. And I was a pretty healthy kid. By the time I was six, I'd started helping Grandpa out with his work. His job was to gather junk from, an abandoned, from abandoned buildings. Then he'd fix it up or pull out the useful parts and sell them. There were plenty of abandoned buildings, but finding good stuff in them was hard. You had to know which parts were useful, or you could end up wasting a bunch of time. Every time I'd find something, he'd explain to me what it was, how it was supposed to work, how to fix it, all sorts of things. Usually, though, I just wanted to finish up work so I could go to the theater. The theater came to our town once a week in a wagon, 
They'd show old move news or movies. I went every single week, but Grandpa only went once in a while, and he'd only go weeks when they showed movies. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that I'd been adopted until I was seven. One of the other kids on my block told me. I guess after Grandpa found me, he looked all over town to try and find somebody who'd take me. The kid from my block actually had a mom, and he'd asked her if she would take me too. I gotta admit, I was pretty shocked when I heard that. There weren't a lot of kids with parents around, so hearing that someone lived with his actual mom was pretty impressive. I was also kind of surprised that Grandpa had tried to get someone else to take me. Did that mean he didn't want me? The kid who told me about Grandpa trying to get rid of me was a real jerk. He was totally spoiled, and he'd brag to everybody about how he had a mom. He liked to come up to me while I was working and say stuff like, Must be hard not having a mother. It never bothered me before, but after I found out that Grandpa had adopted me, I started to think that maybe he didn't really want me. If I could work on my own, then he could get rid of me. I was scared to know the truth, so I never asked him. Then, one day, he took me to a bar in our neighborhood. During the day, of course. He went there sometimes to drink scotch, but I'd never gone before. When we got in, he just walked up to the counter with that grumpy look he has, and I thought, oh no, he's going to make me work here. But I was wrong. I saw him pass something to the bartender, and then he picked me up and set me down on a stool next to the counter. The stool was pretty high, especially for a seven-year-old kid, and my legs just dangled off of it. It seemed really, really high to me and I was pretty nervous. Eventually, the bartender came back over with a glass of scotch and another big glass full of something else. As I looked closer, I realized that the second glass was full of some sort of brown liquid with a scoop of ice cream in it. It took me a minute to realize what it was. A root beer float! I'd never seen one before. I was so surprised. Root beer was even more expensive than the nicest alcohol in the bar. To me, and the other kids, it seemed more like an urban legend than a real drink. But there it was, right in front of me. I stared at the float, I still wasn't sure it was real at that point, and then I turned to look at Grandpa. He looked back at me, and I didn't know what to do, so I turned to the bartender. He'd already turned around and moved off though, so I figured he must have put the glass down in front of me on purpose. It still didn't seem like it could be real, and I was just staring at it when Grandpa told me to hurry up and drink it before the ice cream melted. His gruff voice sounded like an angel's. Is this really mine? He nodded. Words can't describe how awesome it was. I'd never tasted anything like root beer before. The creamy sweetness of the ice cream made my entire head feel light. I feel like the luckiest boy in the whole world. That's not an exaggeration. I really thought that. The root beer float was delicious, but what made me even happier was Grandpa. When I looked over at him, he was smiling. I know that's got to be hard for you to imagine, but he really was. Right then, I didn't care whether he'd just found me and adopted me or not. He'd, brought me a, he'd bought me a root beer float. That made me way luckier than some kid who had a mother but never had tasted root beer. <laughs> of course, after we left the bar, he was the first kid I bragged to. So Grandpa and I were doing pretty good. Until the fight. I was in a super bad mood that day. I'd torn one of my shoes that morning, and some old drunk guy had yelled at me. All the junk I found was totally useless. The day was almost over, and I was fed up, so I just grabbed some trash and took it back to the house. When I showed what I'd found to Grandpa, he frowned. He started going through each thing I'd brought back, explaining what they, why they were all useless. I got really mad and just yelled, I don't care! Then he got mad, and I couldn't take it anymore, so I ran away. I was pretty upset and I started thinking that maybe Grandpa had only adopted me so he could raise me to work and make money for him. After a while, I went and hid in an abandoned building, 
But by then I'd started to calm down and think that maybe I should go back and apologize. It had started raining pretty hard though, so I decided I should wait for it to stop. But that was just an excuse. The truth was that I was nervous. Part of me knew that I'd done something wrong, but I didn't want to admit it. The rain didn't stop though, so I just sat there staring out at the gloomy gray sky. I imagined Grandpa coming to get me. It kept raining all night, and he never showed up. I gave up waiting and decided it was time to go home. I was about halfway there when I heard somebody groaning. At first I thought I should just ignore it and not get involved, but I went over anyway and... it was Grandpa. He was totally soaked, and I could tell right away that he'd been there for a really long time. I yelled, and he opened his eyes a little bit. He smiled weakly, and he said I was gl he was glad I was safe. He'd spent all night out in the rain looking for me. I felt awful. Grandpa had been out in the rain looking for me so long that he'd collapsed. I was horrible. He'd heard me crying in the rain, but I hadn't heard him. As I ran to get the doctor, I promised whatever god might be listening that if they would only save Grandpa, I'd never ask for another root beer float ever again. He got a real bad fever, and his temperature wouldn't go down for days. The doctor said that if it kept up, he'd die. If he died, then I'd be all alone. There wouldn't be anybody left to care about me. The thought of that happening terrified me. Fortunately, I must have passed some of my luck on to Grandpa, because a week later his fever finally broke. I was glad he wasn't going to die, but I was also a little scared. What if he had decided he didn't want a stupid kid like me around anymore? My plan was to apologize as soon as he woke up, but when the moment came, my brain just stopped. Grandpa started to talk, and it took me a minute to realize he was apologizing. I didn't know what to think. He explained that he was an old man, and that he was probably going to die sooner rather than later. He was strict with me because he wanted to make sure I'd be able to make it on my own after he was gone, but maybe he'd been a little too strict. All of the things I'd worried about had been stupid and selfish. Grandpa cared about me a whole lot. He'd been worried when I ran off, and he'd gone out into the rain to look for me. I tried to apologize, but when I opened my mouth I just started crying. I don't think I've cried that much since I was a baby but he just smiled and patted my head. I asked him if he ever regretted adopting me. His eyes got all wide and he said, Of course not! He told me that he was looking for a really important lady, and because of that he'd had to give up on pretty much everything else in his life. But when he took me in and started raising me, he felt like he'd gotten some of what he lost back. That was when I decided to stay with him forever. Even if he said I couldn't. I noticed they reused that background image, so it's true that in the other events, they weren't necessarily real pictures of the discussion. Yeah. And it's a pretty fitting image, because it's still an infirmary and still him crying over... Or yeah, it's basically a repeat. Alright, so that is the Quark ending, I guess. No, the Temioji no. end. Yeah, we already saw Did the Did we already Quark have one. Quark? In Root Beer Veritas, in Achievement Unlocked. Alright, we have four more endings to go, and we have now passed 40 hours of playtime. Now that we've got the heartfelt story time to betray them. <laughs> yeah. Twice, actually. Here we go. Twice? Yeah, the last previous time as well. Haven't we been on trust? Oh, oh we'll, we'll need after we finish this. Yeah, we'll be betraying Tenmyoji twice, not uh, Quark twice. Wait, isn't it three betrayals in a row? Because oh, yeah. we betray them... We betray them here, then we go back and betray them here, then we go back and betray them here. Yep. We're just about to have a huge series of continuously stabbing at least Temioji in the back. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get started. This is for that one time you betrayed me when it didn't even matter. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's the fact that it didn't matter that really twists the knife, and that's going to make us betray him in every possible dimension. <laughs> 
Our, the time for our revenge is One nigh. Minute. Betray. This is all comeuppance. And this is the only route where he'll have some Results understanding of why we're doing this. Yeah. Alright, so everybody else I assume is going to be the same. Yeah, which means you never know, gets out alone, probably. Yep. Everything is the same. So now we've just screwed them over. But maybe Temioji will now go tackle Clover, because he knows. Points have been assigned. Or subtract, please. Hey, what's the deal? Quark had nothing to do with it. I entered the vote. So why'd you choose Betray? Couldn't I ask you the same thing? I don't really think this is the time for a fight, though. Look, Clover's over by the door. You haven't been trying to stop her already? What? Oh, no. So I wonder if we're going to get anything of value from this. Uh, the number nine door. Fuck, she opened it. Ugh! Why? Clover, it's wait! It's probably not a good end, because, like, there's only nine of them, and you get nine paths through the ally and betray and choosing the doors. Clover! What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm going to call the others. What? I'll get justice for Alice. Justice? Wait, do you mean... Wait, in the other route, Temioji said he knows who Zero is. Yeah. So he could, in theory, give us some information in this route? The number nine. Do it will. Time if he's not leaving? Go. No! Please, Clover, wait! Like hell, I'm just gonna let you walk out of here. It's too late for her to wait. Yeah. Dio leapt at Clover, his fists raised. Clover easily avoided him and moved toward the door. Goodbye. I caught one last glimpse of her face as she slid through the door. It was a mask of ice. Well, yeah, once Alice is dead, she doesn't really care anymore, I guess. The number All right, so the door is finally is closed. Is that, that's, I guess that's just it. I guess so. All right, well, I mean, if stabbing Temioji in the back there didn't do anything for us... And there's at least two other places where we can do it as well. Eventually, this will contribute towards something. Yes. All right, if round three doesn't work, we'll just go back to round two. We Allow will... Clover to seduce us. Oh, yes. I had forgotten about Sarah, that. I wanted Ooh. to ask you something. Things are looking up now. Whatever you say, Clover. Can we just keep the AB doors we closed a little bit longer? Round two. So that gives Clover the ability to escape, but not Alice. Yeah, who's Alice alive, didn't right? actually like go away though this time. What do you mean Alice didn't go away? Uh, like she was infected by Radical Six before and like left before we even got to see the screen, but this time her face was up there. Oh, it was. I didn't. Yeah, uh, I didn't even think to pay attention to that. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it either until I realized there's so someone in the top left. Mm -hmm. Promises are made to be broken. I see. Sorry, not sorry. I just couldn't bring myself to trust you. Not after what you did. Betray and killed you. That was a possibility. Yeah. After all, you did choose Betray in the last round. That was a completely different situation. Well, in any event, your idiotic paranoia has given Clover 9 BP. How do you intend to deal with that? Well, that's... that's up to me and Clover to decide. Don't worry. She'd never try to open the... Really? Then what's that? Huh? Look, I believe she's standing in front of the number 9 door right now. W what the hell? No! No way! Turns out Clover likes to leave on her own regardless of the path. Gosh, dang it. And this time she's leaving Alice behind. Mm -hmm. 
I guess she's already like talked to Alice and they've conspired oh, and said the first one of us who can get out and do it. Probably. She opened it. Shit. Maybe Alice will elaborate on this. Yeah. Or Clover. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Sorry. Alice gave me an order though. Oh yeah. Clover, you have to get out of here and call for help. My BP's down to one. I'll have to play the AB game at least three more times in order to get to nine. If someone beats me to it, then we'll be trapped here forever. That can't happen. I'm giving you an order as your commanding officer. Escape. What about the promise you made me? Promise? You said you'd listen to anything I said. So? I am, aren't I? I can sure hear you well enough. Every little word is reaching my ears, isn't it? You. What? Were you thinking of something gross? You're a perv. Hey, come on now. Gosh, dang it. All of my, I mean Sigma's hopes were dashed. The number nine door. It will. Anyway, I did what I promised, so I'll be heading off now. Clover! Clover! Fucking bitch! <laughs> You're not getting out of here! Dio leapt toward Clover with a roar, but she danced quickly aside, dodging his punch with ease. Bye, guys! With a last carefree grin, she leapt through the number nine door. Well, that's a very short end. Yeah. It leaves you in a much more awkward position, because, like, they know what you were planning, sort of. She's gone. Shit! All we can do now is wait for her to call for help. Help, huh? Let's hope there's still someone who can. What's that supposed to mean? Tamiyoji said nothing, just shuffled off through the yellow door and out of the room. A cold silence descended on the rest of us. It was a silence that promised to remain for a very, very long time. And that will be another game over. So now that's exhausts the trust Temio or ally with Temioji route. Yeah. In the beginning, right? Yeah. We exhausted by betraying him twice in a row. Mm-hmm. So now we have to go back and do an initial betrayal. Mm-hmm. We are betraying Temioji. I forget what Fai told you in this room. Yeah, I don't remember she either. She tells you something. I'm sure she'll be okay with the betray, though. Mm -hmm. As Fai and I stepped out of the AB room, I could see the others running towards the projection. This is the first game, right? So yeah. she probably gave us the apple banana explanation. Yeah. Well, I think that was the Alice here, but like probably something similar. Like close we didn't to have that. time for Al for apple banana because we found the body this yeah. route. So we were at the last minute. I think she said. Something yeah, like that. Th this was the one where we're like, just hit the tray, and with a minute left, we're like, not without a reason, and she's like, we're gonna die, and then we rapidly turn in the last five seconds, and are like, okay, now we make a decision. Hmm. You chose betray, huh? That's messed up. What? What? You said I should. Hey, I didn't say that. I just asked you a question. What would happen to our BP if Ten Miyoji chose to betray us? It was a leading question. <laughs> oh, I get it. I was wondering why you were so happy to let me choose after you lost in rock, paper, scissors. You were planning to use me as a scapegoat all along. Was I? God damn it. Yo, what's up? Siggy. Biggie! Bye, I know! Hey, what are you kids doing over there? We're about to end... That's the last time anyway, he's going to do that. We need to go yeah. have a look at the results first. Come on. Hey, wait. Shit. It'll be the it's last been... time we see Zero the Third unless good, good, good. explain <laughs> the ending. Mm hmm. Looks like you're all here. Finally. Let's get ready to. Ember Dex Game! Round one! The results! If every All right, let's go ahead and just see yep. what situation we're at. It's been a while since we've seen every face there. And all at three.
Ten Miyoji so, boat swaps just like Alice's. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, because he initially uh, uh, betrayed us when we allied. Yeah. So all betrayed betray ally pairs across the board, which yeah. leaves Luna, Alice, and Temioji in the worst positions. Yeah, I think the same thing happened in the Luna route when you betrayed as well. Mm -hmm. Makes me wonder if we can skip some of it though. Yeah. It's like if it is the same I got board. Betrayed? He chose ally. Why? He chose betray last time. Last time. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, nothing. The truth was, I didn't know why I'd said that either. The words had just appeared in my mouth before I knew I was saying them. Oh, you're the one who chose Betray. I should be asking you why. I told him you might choose Betray. Fi, you- no, I can't believe you. I'd never choose Betray. I trusted you two, and this is what I got. Ah, I apologize. Fi, you don't need to apologize. I was the one who did it. I pushed the button. Oh, yeah. I guess you've got a point. Huh? Wait, wait, what? It's Sigma's fault. You want to blame someone, blame him. What the hell, Fi? Ah, what, you're gonna fight each other now? I don't care which one of you pushed the button. I'm never trusting either of you again. This isn't over. Just you wait. I tried to think of something to say, but before I could come up with the right words, he was gone. I spun around. Fi! What the- But she was gone too. Ah, what the hell? How'd she just disappear like that? As I looked around the room for Fi, I noticed that Clover, Kay, and Luna seemed to be having some kind of an argument as well. I moved closer and did my best to listen surreptitiously. Why did you do it? Surreptitiously. Sorry. I guess I wanted to get out of here as soon as possible, you know? I apologize, but I felt the same way. But if we all choose ally, then we could all escape together. It only takes three turns to get six points. That would be enough to get us out. Why? Well, of course we know that. But if we betray, then it's... Faster. If your opponent chooses ally and you choose betray, then you gain three points. Do that twice and you get six points. You see? If you ally, then you have to play the AB game three times. But if you betray somebody, you only have to do it twice. And you totally screw the other person over because then they never get out. Why are you acting like that's the right thing to do? I almost feel like you're blaming me or something. We aren't trying to blame you. But, I mean, if you just think about it, wouldn't it make sense to choose Betray? I'm not no, blaming it... you, but you're an idiot. <laughs> I understand now. It was silly of me to trust you guys. Luna walked off with her head buried between her shoulders. Her back trembled as if perhaps she were crying, but I couldn't see her face. Alice, Dio, and Quark, however, seemed to be having some issues of their own. Hmm. Fine. You just wait. Man. This is all your fault, Quark. My fault? Why are you blaming me? They exchanged a dark looks, then stomped off in different directions. Zero, when does the next round start? Alright, this should be skippable. Yeah. At this point, everything's the same for a while. That's doubly so, because we have reached similar pairings that we had before. And we get through all this again. Yeah. I forgot about that. There's so much skipping going on. All right. Yep. How much of this is skippable? It's going to be both the rooms that Temioji are not in yep. are going to be skippable. And He's going to have slightly different anyways. Probably most of that one too. Yeah, just the very beginning bit. I'm doing this slightly out of order because I remember he was in the infirmary. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. What happened with the first and second nonary games? Maybe they can tell us something. Um, Before she could respond, Alice spoke up. Sorry, but I think that's all you're going to get. What? Why? I don't have any proof that you're not Zero Senior. If you are, then she'd be telling our enemy all our secrets. I can't let that happen. Are you an idiot? 
For one, I'm not zero. Second, even if I was, I'd already know everything you're refusing to tell me. There's no reason for you to do this. I wouldn't say that. Maybe there's something we know that Zero Senior doesn't. And that would be... Are you deaf? I said we're not telling you. Let's go, Clover. There's one more room we haven't visited. Oh, okay. Coming. Hey, hold on a minute. Goodbye. The only word that appropriately described how they left the room would be stalked. Not sure entirely what he was supposed to be saying by that. I could have followed them, sure, but it was clear I wouldn't be getting any more information out of Alice or Clover. Damn it. I kicked one of the lockers angrily, but it only rattled back at me. There wasn't anything more I could do. It was time to move on to a different room. Where did I want to go? There was only one place left to go. Can I not initiate skipping? Oh. Yeah. I wanted to initiate this. skipping before going to the map, because then it's faster. Yeah. So I guess they told us a little less this time? I think it's that you weren't cut off by someone mentioning whatever it was. I oh, was right. Sake. Having the thing happen to him. Mm hmm What do you want? What do I want? What, you think I'm here to play doctor? Only if you're secretly Clover. Tell you what. How about I'll be the doctor? You get on the exam table, and I'll cut you open with that scalpel over there. Man, are you still pissed? What the hell do you think? My BP's down to one thanks to you. Come on, I already told you I was sorry. Yes, and that makes it all better, you goddamn idiot. Well then, what the heck am I supposed to do? <laughs> Piss off. Seems like I'm already doing that. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Just get out of my sight. Easy solution, then. Just close your eyes. Leave before I make yours black. The last guy I fought went home in an ambulance. Shouldn't have picked a fight with a paramedic, then. Shut up. <laughs> Fine. I shoved my hands in my pockets and looked around the room. That was a very fun piece of dialogue. So, is it just you here? This side of the divider, yeah. This side? Quark's over there, having a look around. And there's... <laughs> you really gonna make me say it? I think this bit's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Like, I'm gonna tell that to someone who betrayed me. Alright, fine. I'll just ask Quark. Quark! Hey, stop it! Quark! Don't tell him a damn thing! Whoa, you're getting more suspicious by the... Yeah, Start so toward the partition... His reason for not telling you what his deal was with Zero is different. Right. And now we get to see this in real time rather than have someone else tell us about it. Mm hmm What? Move! With a yell, he shoved me away and ran to the boy's side. Quark, what's wrong? Say something! Temyoji shook the boy's body. Is he breathing? <sighs> yeah, he's breathing. Then he just passed out? I don't know. Look, that doesn't matter. Just go find that girl, uh, Luna. She said she was a doctor, didn't she? Quark needs a doctor. Right. Hang on. I'll be right back. She was probably still in the lounge. I spun around and ran off. Yeah, then this bit is going to be the same. All right. So, oh, how are we going to do this? Temiogi won't go He thus. betrayed me last time. What about Phi? You hit the button, right, Sigma? Well, yes, but you previously said that didn't matter. Yeah. I don't want to go with Dio. Same reason. I can't trust that he won't betray me again. Uh, thanks a lot, Quark. You've single-handedly torpedoed my reputation. Well, that leaves us with option B. No, we can't do option B. Why not? I'm sorry, Luna, but I can't trust you or Phi either. Can't trust Luna? Because she's on one. Oh, um, hmm. maybe. The way he is right now, someone's going to have to carry Quark. I just can't afford to give him to someone I don't trust. Sigma. I thought you trusted Phi. Not enough for this. Then what do you intend to do? Quark shifted silently in Kay's arms. 
Quark is a solo, as are you, Tenmyoji. Solos can't pair with one another. You do remember that. Yeah, of course I do. I didn't say there wasn't anyone I trusted. There's one person. Who do you trust, then? Clover. What? <laughs> that's not a good idea. <laughs> Me? Yeah, that's what I said. Why? I can't tell you. I just know that you'll keep him safe. Um, well, that's nice of you to say, but my partner is Sigma. Are you sure you want me to take him? It's fine. Clover, you just vote by yourself. Make Sigma wait outside the AB room. No. If Clover takes Quark, then we have to go with option C, right? That means I'll be stuck with Dio. There's no way in hell I'm going to let that happen. Who do you want to pair up with then? Isn't it obvious? Quark. Remember what the announcement said? Something about how the system will automatically vote ally for anyone who doesn't enter their own vote in time? If Quark doesn't wake up by then. No! See, this is exactly why I can't trust any of you! Hmm. One minute remains. We don't have time to argue this. Let's take a vote. Those opposed to C? Alice and Dio's hands went up. What? Why don't you want C, Dio? Well, if she's got that much of a hate on for me, that hardly plays into my hands, does it? Hmm. Fine, whatever. I assume anyone who didn't raise their hand is all right with option C, then? No one objected. I kept my mouth shut, too. Just as Alice had said, there was an excellent chance that Quark would default to Ally. If that happened, he'd make a great opponent. I'd choose Ally, of course, but it would be good to not have to worry about him choosing Betray. All right. Six to two in favor. Wait, what about me? Stay here if you don't like it. I imagine your partner might have something to say about that, though. Kay handed Quark to me gently, then crossed his arms and turned to face Alice. Her jaw clenched as she stared up at him, and I could see the gears turning inside her head. Fine. Ten seconds remain. <laughs> Hurry, Clover. The door's closing. Right. Hey, take care of Quark. Don't worry about it. I got a good grip on Quark, nodded to Temyoji, and took off for the door. Our feet slapped against the metal floor as we ran. The empty voice of the announcer echoed in my ears. Two. One. Zero. Chromatic doors closing. It's a bit weird that he put Quark with us. Yeah. When we're the last person. It's like, I need someone I can trust, Clover, even though she's with Sigma. Yeah. Huh? Is this a dead end? Well, there are three doors here. But it looks like they're all locked. Hmm. What's this thing? It's got a lever on it. Can you pull the lever? Come on, my hands are kind of full right now. Oh, yeah. I can take Quark then. You really don't want to touch that thing, do you? Well, I mean, look at it. It looks suspicious. Like I'm going to touch it and whoosh, a bunch of poison needles fly out of the wall. Maybe if I had like a piece of wood to move it with or something. Or a piece I of think cork. You <laughs> yeah, get Quark's hand on it. I think you might be a little paranoid. Then you do it. Fine. I shifted Quark over to one shoulder and flipped the switch with my free hand. The treatment center. Yep. So this is going to be the second to last puzzle room. Yeah. See? No needles. Everything is now, fine. Only one of the doors opened. Did you see the plaque on that door before it opened? I think it said something like, Treatment Center. Do you think that's some kind of medical thing? First an infirmary, now this? Why do I keep ending up in these places? I glanced over at Quark, asleep on my shoulder. Hey, you know what? We may have lucked out. Huh? What do you mean? Well, if this is where they treat people, maybe they've got something that can cure Quark. Oh, yeah. Let's head on in, then. Okay. Hopefully he's not treated during the escape room, because that'd mean more Quark voice. <laughs> we'll just stick him in a pod and leave him, and then 
when we show back up with Temioji, he'll be like, what the hell have you done with Quark? <laughs> what are those? It says on the side, treatment pod. So I guess it treats people? Maybe it can help Quark. Yeah. Damn, no good. It's locked. Let's take a look around. Maybe something in here will tell us how to unlock this door. Okay. Clover nodded and bounced off to the examine to examine the room. I lay Quark down just outside of the door to the treatment center. Clover might have been overly paranoid about the lever, but there was no harm in being cautious. Hang on there, little guy. We'll get you fixed up soon. I ruffled his hair gently, then turned and headed back into the room. I had some investigating to do. Alright, so next time, we will seek a way out of the treatment center. In the meanwhile, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye!